Greetings and good grief, something else to fix. I picked up this DX100 for a reasonable price, however it has a broken volume potentiometer. So I've taken all the screws off the back of the casing and will remove the four screws there for the potentiometer assembly. And there's a uh, cable attached to there which I'm going to remove. There you can see the snapped part of the assembly. Should really use a screwdriver here, but we'll just remove that clip, just move that clip out of the way, and we can pull that connector out with a little wiggle. Okay, now I think it may be possible to get a replacement piot potential matter for this but uh, I didn't want to chuck any more money at this uh, keyboard so um, I had one of the same length but it had uh, different configurations for the pins so I couldn't swap that over it's at the uh, it's at the same value I think and I'm going to try and replace the sliding part let's see how we get on right so we need a solder sucker I uh, prefer these for um, removing solder and uh, just bear in mind that uh, I heated up the solder there and sucked out the liquid solder and uh, with some gentle persuasion with a screwdriver we can remove that potentiometer. Come on, that's it. Oh, there we go. There's the offending article. Now, uh, next I'm going to uh, prise open those little tabs to take off the front of the casing. Just watch your fingers with uh, sharp instruments there. I've also marked uh, with a uh, permanent marker um, just which way round this goes. Okay, that's the casing removed. Now we can get the nylon slide out and get access to that. Now that's the donor uh, slider and I've removed the contacts on that. Uh, take a knife and just slice off the little nylon nodules. Now you can see sandpaper there at the bottom. Now you can use that uh, to see if we can make that fit and I like to uh, see how that travels up and down and I'm also going to see how it travels on the original potentiometer you may need like I say to use uh, sandpaper there or a knife whatever it takes to get that to fit and as you can see, I'm also going to snip off the height of that to, to match the original. That's more like the original height. Now this is the old, uh, this is the broken slider part. I'm going to take a knife and cut off those nodules. And I'm going to reuse those uh, connectors. So again, watch your fingers, slide up, cut off the nodules, and I'm going to transfer those on to the black nylon slider assembly. There's that sandpaper again, which you might need to use. Now, I do uh, highly recommend this mitre fast or similar super glue. It has uh, a reacting spray there that um, it cures in seconds and it's, it's like resin, it cures like resin. Uh, use liberally and you can see there how I've super glued that on. You might need to degrease that as well before you do that. And I'm just going to uh, see that we've got some tension on those contacts as well. Oh, 
I've looks like I've also used a file just to just to get this fitting just perfect. Now I've uh, loosely put on the case case in there, and we'll we can uh, secure that again with some pliers gently. Don't want to do it too tight, and we'll check the travel on that. That's pretty smooth. I'm I, I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, believe it or not, this does work. I just want to uh, assure you that it's worked really well when I finished. So um, let's have that make do and mend, can do attitude. I'm just going to open up those uh, hole, holes there with a the screwdriver. Uh, just to make sure I can get that back in. So anyway, that was all soldered back together. And um, let's have a look at the next item. This £11 vintage amplifier that I brought, knowing it had one uh, 40 potentiometer. Um, check out, or look out for that Made in Japan uh, electronics. If you're looking for vintage stuff. So, uh, obviously I took some screws out there. I don't think they make them like this anymore, certainly not for £11. There's the panel assembly for the uh, equaliser. And I'm going to... Uh, now basically it was only working on one channel, or it was intermittent. Each of those potentiometers uh, does work as a stereo um, effect for the equalizer. So uh, if they're 40 you might only get one channel working. So again I use this solder sucker and we prise that off. Gently with a screwdriver and we'll inspect it. Just be careful guys, there you can see I've removed the solder on that one, in fact there were two uh, 40 on this I, I later realised, so I fixed them both, there's uh, both of them removed. Again we uh, prise open the casings with the tabs there. I do see this one has a uh, center detent with a little ball bearing, so we don't want to lose that. Now, these that's one of these has actually fallen off. Um, so again, I've used that mite of fast or similar uh, super glue to uh, reaffix that, and like I say, it cures like resin. Now I just want to check the tension on those contacts before I put it back together and as you can see there's a nice little bit of tension there so we retain continuity. Hey presto it's all back together. Now uh, you'll just have to take my word for it that these fixes work very well. Um, I did sell the DX100 but uh, yeah uh, good luck fixing stuff guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.